Good morning. My name is Jerry Bronson, and I'm really pleased to be here to give the devotion this morning. I was born in Baker City, the middle of three girls. I was married right after college, and we have three children, boy, girl, boy. We now are enjoying five grandchildren, three girls and two boys, and another little girl on the way. I grew up in Sunday school and youth group, but never heard about Jesus being a personal savior. I understood that Jesus was God's son, and I knew he was the savior of the world. But it was sort of like a blanket covering the whole world and saving everyone. I first met God personally at a church camp where I told God I wanted to know him. He has answered that child's prayer more and more through my life. My question for you today is, how do you know Jesus? I have been a Christian for 42 years, and Jesus keeps showing me new ways to know Him. I knew Jesus as my Savior in 1978. I thought I was a Christian, but when I asked Jesus to be my Lord and Savior, things began to change in my life. I have realized it was my perspective that he was changing, not the world around me. The Bible came alive to me. I could understand what it was saying. Through six years of Bible study fellowship, I came to know that Jesus and God the Father loved me so much, they wrote a love letter to me, a love letter called the Bible. I learned of Jesus' personal care for my specific concerns when he would answer my prayers to turn the rain off as my children walked home from school. That seemed so insignificant in the big picture, but God, the God of the universe, cares about me and my children. I learned that Jesus gives courage and strength when I was called to do hard things in my life. I learned that Jesus heals when he brought me all of the practitioners and the medicines I needed for my health twice. God spoke to me in scripture just this morning, Psalms 56, 13, for you have delivered my life from death and my feet from falling that I may walk before God in the light of life and of the living this is the very story I'm going to tell you today. One year ago, March 11th, 2020, I went into the Bind Hospital with Guillain-Barre syndrome. This caused me to be paralyzed from the neck down. When in the emergency room in Primeville, the doctor suspected Guillain-Barre syndrome and brought my husband a packet of information about what this illness was. Neither one of us had a clue of what it was. After reading some of it, he started telling me what could happen. Complete paralysis, ventilator, heart-lung machine, death. At that point, my legs were paralyzed and my arms were very weak. As I tried to comprehend what was going on, all I could think was all of this is bad. In that moment, time froze. In that moment, Jesus showed me all the ways he had revealed himself to me. His love, his friendship, his words spoken directly to me in scripture. He was showing me all the ways that he had prepared me for this exact moment. He was showing me I belong to him completely. He was showing me all the ways that he could and would stand by me even now. In this overwhelming awareness, I turned to my husband to reassure him and said to him, Jesus is with us and he will take care of me. Jesus Bob answered with a resounding yes. His 
confidence confirmed that Jesus was already at work. Over the next three days, the hospital closed to visitors because of the coronavirus. My condition deteriorated to the point that I didn't have enough strength in my arms or fingers to push the button for help. I wasn't swallowing well, and the medical staff feared I would choke. One doctor kept telling me if my breathing deteriorated anymore, I would be on a ventilator. Every time I was anxious, I would go back to Jesus is with me. He is taking care of me. This always calmed me. My voice got so weak, I could barely say, Hey Siri, call husband. Loud enough for it to work. And Bob was having trouble hearing me. Through all of this, I wasn't scared. Let me say that again. It's against all logic. Through all of this, I wasn't scared. I was so sure of and could feel Jesus' presence with me, which covered me with his peace. Then Bob started telling me the messages he was getting from family and friends. Most messages were, we are praying for you. I became aware that Jesus was hearing and answering all those prayers. Somehow, they became his extravagant love that he poured out on me again and again, day after day, week after week. There were people praying for me all over the United States and around the world. There were many people that I don't know praying for me, and strangers and friends sent cards. I'm so grateful for the love that Jesus poured out through the prayers of his people. I knew I couldn't do this without crying. It's so precious. When people learn what happened to me, many have said that it must have been scary. Jesus has given me the opportunity to say I wasn't afraid. Jesus was with me, and he is still taking care of me. That was true for the three weeks I spent in the hospital care. After I got home, I have had several setbacks and times of extreme anxiety and severe depression. After the first one, I really identified with Elijah. How could I stand so firmly in Jesus and have seemingly lost all faith three weeks later? Jesus gently drew me back and restored my faith through my husband, friends, family, music, and scripture. In all this, I tell you, I would go through it all again to experience Jesus' faithfulness, his love, his gentleness, and the unchanging connection Jesus wants to have with me. This is an extreme example of Jesus and his sufficiency. But his strength, his love, his faithfulness is available to each of us every day. We can share his love by praying for each other. We can come alongside each other when things cause us to lose our faith. Being honest with Jesus and with each other is crucial. This last year has been hard for everyone, but I challenge you to see how you have come to know Jesus more and how you know him differently. I also challenge each of you to look back over your lives to see how Jesus has revealed himself to you personally, his answers to prayers, his protection in accidents and illness, his love, his compassion in times of loss, his provision of family and friends, his speaking directly to your heart in scripture. Write them down so you can be reminded, but also so you can share with others when they need to be encouraged and with your children so they will know their spiritual heritage. Now I'm going to share with you what I wrote in my prayer journal, April 9th, 
2020, about a week after I came home from the hospital. This is my prayer for you. Genesis 5:22. Enoch walked in habitual fellowship with God. Lord, I pray for all my people and myself that we could walk in habitual fellowship with God. Lord, I believe I have had an experience of that through this illness, and I don't want to let it go. I want it. I long for it. I long to have other people understand and long for it too. Lord, give me words to draw people to you that you could have understand that they could have understanding also. Lord, without being in your presence, experiencing your peace and experiencing the joy that results in nothing else matters, they will not understand. Lord, I pray that every one of these people would experience you in such a way that they will never let you go. I'm praying this, yet I fear I will be the one to let you go. Lord, help me with my damaged grip to hold on to you with everything I have, my whole being. Out of that continual relationship with you, let others see you, Lord, and walk with you too. Amen. Thank you, sisters in Christ, for listening today. Be blessed in your walk with Jesus.